Do you have a wood shop? Does your wood shop produce lots of sawdust? Does your wood shop produce stupidly large amounts of sawdust? Then you need the Fanboy. The Fanboy is a powerful air filter that can clean all the air in a single car garage in just a few minutes. It is powerful, stylish, and just the thing you need to rid your wood shop of annoying and dangerous dust clouds. Build yours today! There have been a lot of studies on the health effects of sawdust in the workshop. Woodworking produces lots of dust particles of different sizes that drift around your wood shop. Some people call this dust man glitter. There are t-shirts that explain this. To illustrate dust in the wood shop, we'll use dinosaurs to represent those sawdust particles you create whenever you cut, sand, or otherwise work with wood. Dust particles are measured in thousandths of a millimeter, or microns. Heavy dust particles, like those larger than 100 microns, fall to the floor immediately and you can sweep them up. Small dust particles, however, do not have enough mass to fall quickly to the floor. It can float in the air in your shop for a long time. For example, once a 5 micron dust particle is stirred up, it can float around in the air for 30 minutes or longer. The smaller particles linger in the air even longer. Dust particles smaller than 10 microns are your shop's primary respiratory health risk. They can drift in the air in your shop for a long time. That's the air you're breathing. Those tiny, invisible specks of sawdust can get into your lungs and cause anything from allergic reactions to severe respiratory ailments. This can be bad if breathing is something you enjoy doing. So sawdust really isn't just man glitter. It's really an equal opportunity lung killer that can really hurt you when you're in the shop. All right, my friends, gonna level with you. Wearing an air respirator looks cool as heck. Like, who's gonna mess with you while you're wearing this on the street? Absolutely nobody. But it looks cool, but it also keeps you safe. It's got all the sawdust floating around in the air that your little human lungs literally cannot take. They will shred over time. So you need to wear this. But once you're, you have this, you can implement a shop air cleaner system that will clean all the air in the shop. So whenever you want to show everybody your cool creations that you and your buddies have made together, they can breathe too. It's a win-win if you ask me. A lot of woodworkers use box fans with filters attached to the back of them, usually with duct tape to clean the air. And a lot of woodworkers online like to argue about how effective a setup like this is. The fact is it does work. It will clean the air. But if you want to get the smaller one micron particles, you need a thicker filter. And that requires something more like this. So this is a one micron and a three micron filter. If you put this in front of a fan, it's going to work, but you're not going to have enough airflow to really make it effective. In order to truly move the air in your shop, you need a more powerful fan. We actually did try the box fan approach for our shop, but our experiments with this rig showed us we needed a lot more power. And the opportunity to use more powerful hardware is really something you should never turn down. For the fanboy, we elected to use a one micron filter. You see it's a pretty thick filter. And this removes dust particles down to one micron, but we can't wash this. So what we did was we got a washable filter that takes down to three microns to put in front of the one micron. So this filter takes the big heavy stuff out and the one micron filter only filters the smaller things and lasts longer. So a double filter here is what we have for the fanboy. Washing the three micron filter is a pretty straightforward process. We just throw it in the yard and hose it off until it's blue again. We can do this as often as we want, which is a good thing because we're pretty cheap and we don't like buying filters. We put the filters in a wooden box that we mounted one third of the way back from the back wall of the shop. It's large enough to hold 20 by 20 filters. The one micron filter goes in first. And on top of that, we put the three micron filter. And they're held in by these little clips. This gives us a 20 by 20 intake face to take advantage of the power of the motor. 
The problem is axial fans, the type of fan with propellers on them, don't have enough torque to pull air in large volumes through things like large filter stacks like we have on the fanboy. So in order to get the throughput we needed, we went with a centrifugal fan, also known as squirrel cage fans. These are the types of fans that are used in HVAC systems in homes and businesses and have the, the torque and strength to pull large quantities of air through a system even if there's filters interrupting. This is an inline centrifugal fan. It, uh, it spins this way and the air comes out through here. It's lighter weight than most HVAC systems that we have. It was, it was relatively cheap to get and it runs on 110 volt power which means all we had to do is plug it into the house. We didn't have to run any special power out here. And it's dented because we may have dropped it a couple of times. One of the concerns that we had with this was that the air would come out of the back of the, of the fan and it would be sucked around to the intake, which doesn't really help us. So what we did was we took a black bucket, just a, just a shot bucket, and we cut the end off of it so that we would have, be able to direct the air away from the entrance. And then we took a piece of sheet metal to hold it up and put it here. Well, the fanboy looks like a jet engine, so we painted it to look like a jet engine. The noise in the shop made it difficult to tell if the fanboy is running or not, so we installed an LED to tell us when it's on. Next up was the speed control. Most inexpensive fan controllers use something called pulse width modulation to increase or decrease the speed of the fan. The speed controller sends a series of pulses, longer pulses for higher speed, shorter pulses for lower speed. This sometimes causes the fan to buzz, and it did for hours. That was annoying, so we replaced it. Our choice for a replacement is called a Variac. A Variac has a large copper coil that allows it to change alternating current voltage to control speed instead of pulsing the voltage at different rates. This gives you a steady voltage source, and it gives you a lower fan noise no matter what speed you choose. And let's be honest, the word Variac just sounds cooler in a mad scientist kind of way. We mounted the Variac on its side inside the fan box where it has an unending supply of clean, cool air flowing across it. The speed control knob is accessed on the outside of the box. All right, so here's the fan boy. It's off right now. So to turn it on, we just take over here, plug it in. And it comes up to speed with the LED on. This is running at about one third power. So it's, it's putting out a little bit of air, but we usually run on a higher power when we're in the shop. This is full power. So this is a thousand cubic feet per minute. It works rather well. But will it work effectively? Let's talk about math. The shop is 11 feet wide, 21 feet long, and has a nine foot tall ceiling. This gives us a total of 2,079 cubic feet of air space in the shop. To be sufficiently clean, air in an enclosed space should be recirculated six times an hour. At full power, the fanboy centrifugal fan is rated at 1,060 cubic feet per minute. Under the load imposed by the filters, the rating is approximately 800 cubic feet per minute. 2,079 cubic feet divided by a cleaning speed of 800 cubic feet per minute means that at full power, the fanboy can clean all of the air in the shop once every two and a half minutes or 24 times an hour. This is four times the recommended rate. We feel that the fanboy is appropriately overpowered for the job. The fanboy is mounted near the ceiling one third of the way from the back of the shop. This placement allows the fanboy to set up a circular flow of air through the shop. Dusty air goes in one side, clean air comes out the other. And the circular airflow ensures that all air eventually goes through the filter. Is the fanboy effective? <coughs> effective at being awesome. We can breathe now. I like it. This is what the washable filter looks like after a few months of use. Oh boy! Gee, that's not in my lungs. Nasty. <laughs> so the 
fanboy is a long saving device that consists of a box, a fan, a bucket, two filters, and an LED paint and decals. Is it overbuilt, overpowered, and kind of ridiculous? Yeah! The fanboy is a beast and we sure do love it. With all of this air cleaning power hanging on the wall, you may be wondering what on earth it is we do out here in the shop to generate so much sawdust. Well, I've been building stuff for decades and our house is full of odd things that we built to make our life easier, uh, make it look more like us, or just for plain fun. People visiting the house have told us for years that we need to share this and show the weird stuff that we've come up with. So we're shooting videos now. And there's a couple of them up right now that you can see. But we're working on more videos to cover stuff like this. for all that stuff and more. You can see it whenever we put up a new video by subscribing and for ringing that bell. We're having a ball making these videos, it really is fun. Hope you like them, if you do, hit like below. Feel free to share them, show people this cool stuff that we've got. Uh, but for me, it's time for me to make more sawdust, so I'll see you next time.